welcome dear students watch the video from the starting to the end so that all the concepts are clear welcome dear students to computer studies standard 9 chapter number 1 introduction to computer part 2 through this channel i am teaching all the chapters of standard 9th and standard 10th especially i am preparing the students for the ssc board exams in computer subjects so that they can get full marks and for this purpose i am teaching each and every practicals of 10th standard also so if you are new on my channel and you haven't subscribed the channel yet please do subscribe the channel and continue watching the video so let's begin our first topic today is simple model of a computer this simple model of a typical computer is based on the working of a computer as shown in the figure the first thing is input then second thing is process and storage and the final thing is output now as discussed earlier instructions are needed to make computer perform some actions now do you know the meaning of instructions none of the author of the book has taken pain to explain you the meaning of instructions instruction means software see first thing as we purchase a new computer we need to install the system software in which the instructions are written so as how to computer how is the computer to perform or how to do different operations thereafter we install different softwares as per our need so these all are known as instructions to obey instructions provided by the user and perform computations a computer needs to have a mechanism to input for example in our computer we have got the usb slot from where we can ins insert the pen drive and install the programs we have got another mechanism also that is our computer can get connected to the internet we can download the programs and install it the input mechanism helps in feeding the data as well as instructions into the computers this mechanism is called input unit devices used for input purpose are known as input devices typical input devices are keyboard and mouse now see wherever or whichever word i have marked in red and bold from there the mcqs could be asked i am telling in the it in the beginning only so that every time at each word i do not have to stop and waste your time and tell you that from here the mcq could be asked input provided through the input mechanism is stored in the memory of the computer and further processed by the mechanism called processing unit or processor see whatever input we provide for example if i type something in microsoft word then that is the input given by me through the with the help of keyboard then after that we get the result on the monitor so in between there is so much uh, process which is taking place that is done by the processing unit or processor results are presented to the user through the output mechanism called output unit typical output devices are monitor and printer in short input memory processor and output are the basic components of a typical computer here i have given you the photographs of different input units which are the most common input units now my way of explaining the chapter is different i don't like students mugging up the things instead of that i try to explain it in such a way that you are able to memorize the things easily for example if you see the photographs of this things then whenever i speak the word input device at once this things will come into your mind so now first 
we'll discuss about the input unit the input unit provides a facility to enter data and instructions into the computer input mechanism supports many devices such as keyboard mouse joystick barcode reader universal serial bus in short it is known as usb devices etc different input devices take different data in different forms and sends it to the computer memory for example use of the keyboard to enter the data and instructions is very much similar to the use of the typewriter in olden days typewriter was used to do the text entry so keyboard is used for doing the textual entry another way to input data is reading through the barcode reader barcode reader is normally seen at the super stores remember when you purchase a packet of biscuits the shopkeeper uses a small device and presses a button on the device with the sound of a beep the barcode printed on the tag of a biscuit packet is read and copied to the computer in order to generate the bill mouse is also used to input the data into the computer now the first question which will arise in your mind is that from mouse we cannot do the textual entry neither we can scan anything then how is it known as an input device now my dear students it is not only input device but it is also used for output process everything for example if i want to copy a file from the pen drive into the computer i can give a right click on the file copy and right click and paste simple so therefore mouse is known as an input device another thing mouse is a device that controls movement of the pointer or cursor on the display screen as mouse is moving on the surface the pointer on the display screen is also moved most of the input devices converts the data to the machine readable form this is asked in the textual mcq number 4 so after the input unit we come to the next unit and that is memory and control unit once the input is collected via any of the input devices the input is needed to be stored into the computer memory computer memory retains data instructions and processed output for a while or for a longer time there are two different types of memories which are known as primary memory and secondary memory or temporary memory and permanent memory see here i have given a picture the middle picture is of ram ram is a temporary memory while the right hand side picture is of hard disk that is a permanent memory while control unit is like the brain of the computer so all three things i will explain you in detail first i will be explaining you about the primary memory some computer memories are capable of remembering the content for very short duration say till the work is in progress and the continuous power supply is ensured i give you an example suppose if you are preparing a powerpoint presentation you have not saved the file anywhere and if the electricity goes away then the file if it is not saved the data will get lost so where was it stored till the power supply was on it was stored in the primary memory such memory is called volatile memory such memory forms primary storage device of a computer hence it is known as primary memory now this question should be arising in your mind also that sir if this memory is able to store the data only for a temporary period of time then why it is known as primary memory so the explanation is that 
that if there is no primary memory then how will you open that powerpoint presentation and how will you create that powerpoint presentation you will not be able to even start the computer without the primary memory it is very important for a system operating system to load or for a program to load we require primary memory it is also called temporary memory or main memory the input from different devices goes first to the primary memory and will be retained into the memory electronically now see whatever file you open before you save the file temporarily it will be saved in the main memory only would you like to see how the primary memory looks yes or no if yes then i will show you the photograph of primary memory so here is the image of ram you have just simply mugged up till now that ram is random access memory but you also should know how does it look and where it gets fitted so the upper image is of ram that is random access memory and that is main memory or primary memory and the lower image is of the ram only but it is getting it is fitted in the motherboard in its slot now the content will remain in the mem main memory that is in the ram till the computer is switched off when the computer is switched off or reset the content will get lost i hope this concept is clear now no need to mug up anything more now secondary memory now see just now i had given you an example of uh, that you were preparing a powerpoint presentation and if the electricity electric current goes off what happens it gets lost but you after you save it in the hard disk see here i have given the photograph of uh, the hard disk right when you press control s or when you click on the file menu and save option then this type of thing will open then you will select that you want to save it in local disk e d e f any drive and then you will save the thing so this is the partitions of hard disk and that is forming the secondary memory it is a permanent memory so to preserve the content for long time we need to save it in the secondary memory or auxiliary storage device this is known as secondary memory or auxiliary storage device devices that use secondary memory are called secondary storage devices now unlike the primary memory the secondary storage is non volatile see these are the characteristics of secondary memory it could be asked in the mcq that uh, it is non volatile it is slow not slow actually slow in comparison with the primary memory less expensive and larger in capacity how it is larger in capacity you compare the size of hard disk it is 1 tb while the size of a ram is 4 gb or 8 gb so secondary memory is always larger here i have given the photographs of secondary memory these all are permanent memory if you save anything in the hard disk or in the drive or in the memory card anywhere cd dvd then it will be stored permanently any time you can make the use of that thing now i hope that primary and secondary memory is clear and i am able to explain you the exact concept of what is primary memory and secondary memory now we come to the topic central processing unit once the data and instructions are entered into the computer memory instructions are executed and results are prepared that means suppose if you type something then the results will be displayed as the output on the monitor now as per the requirement of the user the results are preserved in the memory or sent to the output unit suppose if you save that file then it will be saved and otherwise it will be simply displayed on the output unit to execute instructions the computer needs to perform some arithmetic and logical computations the arithmetic and logical computations are performed by a unit called arithmetic logic unit also known as alu now you may be thinking that what uh, uh, calculations uh, may needed to be performed now see computer stores everything in the form of zeros and ones 
that is in binary form and whatever data we enter suppose we copy down a song or image or we type something it is not in binary so it has to constantly convert that thing into binary and when it gives the output whether it is on the mo uh, monitor or on the speaker it has to again convert it back so these all things are done by the unit called ALU besides the ALU there is a control unit also known as CU which manages the execution of instructions and also control operations of other components of the computer ALU plus CU is known as central processing unit or CPU CPU is known as the brain of the computer now most of the teachers have made the students mug up the thing that CPU is known as the brain of the computer besides some high speed that is cache memory can also be the part of the CPU now simply teaching all this thing doesn't make any meaning I would like to show you the image of CPU and also how and where does it get fit in the computer so here is the image of CPU the photo of CPU is clicked from both the sides from the top side and the bottom side it is known as the brain of the computer on the motherboard there is a slot on which the CPU is fixed and on the top of the CPU a fan is constantly kept on as it is the brain of the computer our human brain also gets heated very fast now this is the brain of a computer so it needs to be kept cool now the last topic of today's video is output unit the output unit is normally a visual screen called monitor in older days monitors used to provide black and white output while at present we are using color monitor here you can see the different types of monitors and I hope you are enjoying the way I am uh, teaching the things instead of simply reading out the things from the text but I am sure that you are able to understand all the concepts clearly to output sound special devices such as speakers and headphones are used to print the output printers of different types are used optionally output is directly published on the website or sent as a file via internet also so here we complete this part of this chapter if you like the video please hit the like button So here we complete this video, we meet in the next video. Thank you, goodbye.